You know what? I wanted to actually bring up something, okay? Because also another another issue that I have with the Giants and just how they go about the accountability at the quarterback position, okay? And I've been talking about just the Giants and their lack of black quarterbacks the last couple of weeks, but this right here has nothing to do with that, okay? Nothing. But it's another another big issue that I have with the Giants with their quarterback situation, okay? And look, I'm someone who I grew up on the Giants beginning in the mid 80s, okay? And there was always accountability at the quarterback position, okay? To the point where, all right, the Giants, they don't let a quarterback have more than one bad season. They don't let the team, okay, <laughs> all right, really have more than one bad season with a quarterback, and that quarterback was still the quarterback of the team until until Eli Manning. Once Eli Manning came in the picture, all that went out the door, okay? He was allowed to stay year after year after year after year after year of losing uninspiring football and they never got rid of him. They got rid of everybody else and I, I've gone through this before. They got rid of it because people they love to say like the whole the whole argument for why Eli Manning should not be removed as quarterback when he was the quarterback of the team, all right, from two thousand twelve from the middle of the two thousand twelve season through all right, two thousand eight, okay, when he was the full quarterback for all that, okay? Uh, from that point, the from, from from that point, from the middle of 2012 through the middle of 2018, Eli Manning's play dropped significantly, and so did the teams, and that affected it. But like the people who you know the the whole argument that people have is for Eli Manning is that okay, he had two Super Bowls, right? But as I pointed out, there are plenty of people who were involved with those two Super Bowls who the Giants, you know, two Super Bowl championships meant nothing for them, okay? It was, no, okay, we think you're not good enough anymore. We're getting rid of you, okay? So, like, that line, oh, he's got two rings. The only one who that <laughs> made Teflon was Eli Manning, okay? And... So that's the biggest issue, and of course, everybody lost their job around him. The players, or his teammates, and the general manager, all right, the black general manager, Jerry Reese, and we know that there's not a lot of black general managers or executives, especially in the NFL, and there are a lot of Giants fans who were very critical of Jerry Reese, and I thought they were crazy, and they were Eli Manning, all right, fanatics, and they ran, they helped run Jerry Reese out of town, right? All right? So this is how, like, you got black people who, they act like, oh, you know, they care so much for the cause. And look, if you aren't good enough to have the job, you should not have the job. But Jerry Reese was good enough and talented enough and had proven his worth. And to me, I feel like if he had been allowed to get rid of Eli Manning, all right, any time between the middle of 2012 through 2008, well, he was fired, all right, when the Giants allowed Geno Smith to become the first black quarterback ever to make a start. In franchise history, the next day he was fired along with the head coach, McAdoo, who the year before as a first-year head coach led the Giants to 11-5 and five record, all right, with Eli Manning having like the fourth to the last worst, all right, he had the, he had the, like the fourth worst, or, or he was fourth from the bottom of QBR, all right, among all starting quarterbacks, okay, so the Giants in spite of Eli Manning being terrible in 2016, made the playoffs, were 11 and 5. With McAdoo, first year, before the end of the next year, he was fired along with the black general manager because uh, they sat Eli down for a game, right? <laughs> and and uh, yeah, so like it didn't. So I believe if Jerry Reese had been allowed to draft a quarterback or bring in a trade for a quarterback or whatever, he had been allowed to identify a quarterback. And there are rumors that McAdoo, all right, wanted the Giants to draft Patrick Mahomes after they made that the playoffs in 2016, 
all right, but lost in the first round to Green Bay. <laughs> Excuse me. With Eli Manning, with Eli Manning not having a a very good season, but because they were eleven and five, like that gave Eli's Eli's fanatics and apologists, oh well, the Giants were eleven and five. They were good with him, and they really weren't. And I always said if if they had better quarterback play with that team in twenty sixteen, they could have won a Super Bowl. And I felt like that team was very similar to the teams that won one in two thousand seven and two thousand eleven. I thought that. The 2016 team was very similar. <coughs> all right. So it was very similar. All right. They had a dynamic. All right. Odell Beckham Jr. was as good as any receiver, any offensive player in the game at that time. Okay. And I always said that he, he saved Eli's career because, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to even go get into that, but they had him. And they had a, a very good defense with a really good pass rush, okay, with Jason Pierre-Paul, all right, Vernon Carey, um, uh, Olivier Vernon. He was uh, really good for the Giants, okay, the other pass rusher, all right. And they had a really good defense, like number two defense in the NFL. And I just felt like if they had really good quarterback play, they could have won the Super Bowl again. But Eli Manning did not – He he – he he didn't, could not hold his weight, and then when they got into that playoff game that year in 2016, Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers. Like once Aaron Rodgers got going in that game, and became started playing great, Eli Manning could not he could not keep up. All right, if you're asking Eli Manning to win you a shootout, you're done. Okay, Eli Manning does not win shootouts. Okay, he wins games where his defense can keep the team in the game, and he's got to make a few plays. Okay, that's great, but the Giants ain't never, all right, all those playoff games they won with him and the only won playoff games in two years with him, 2007 and 11, okay? The other 16 years he was with the Giants, the Giants did not win a playoff game, okay? There were plenty of times because people act like Eli Manning was, like, so clutch. Like, every time they got to the playoffs, he was Mr. Clutch. Well, there were other years where they made the playoffs. He only made the playoffs with the Giants four of the years, okay? The other four years, it was one and done <laughs> with the Giants in the playoffs with him. One and done, okay? And he didn't play well, all right? So, so you make the playoffs six out of 16 years, it's really, it's really not impressive, okay? It's not. And then, you know, and then four of the years, everybody says you're like Mr. Clutch in the playoffs. Four of the years, you don't even play well, and the team is one and done. So, but, yeah, so at the end of that 2016 season, all right, the Giants, McAdoo, there's rumors that McAdoo wanted to draft Pat Mahomes, but, of course, everybody, oh, Eli Manning is so great. The Giants were 11 and 5. We don't need a quarterback. No, we can't draft a quarterback. And so they bring Eli back in 2017. It was a disaster to the point where he ended up getting benched, all right? And we know how that went, went down. But I just felt like could Jerry Reese, people knocked him and said that he didn't know what he was doing and like, like ragged him, okay? To me, Jerry Reese did a great job of bringing talent to the Giants for both Super Bowl teams. And in 2016, they were very talented again. I mean, he's the man who drafted Odell Beckham Jr. I mean, Odell Beckham Jr. was super talented. I mean, and he was not necessarily the obvious pick because several teams passed up on Odell Beckham in the draft, okay? So, but Jerry Reese identified him as like, no, he's going to be a star. He drafted Jason Pierre-Paul. He drafted Landon Collins, who in 2016 was an all-pro with the Giants, okay? I believe first team, all right? I mean, the Giants had so much talent in 2016 on that team. Like I said, that team has Super Bowl talent, okay, brought by Jerry Reese, okay? The next year, 2017, I felt the same way, okay? They brought in Brandon Marshall, who had just had two big years with the Jets, okay? Drafted Evan Ingram, okay, very talented tight end, okay? You know, had, had, had Odell, all this. So, I believe if Jerry Reese had been allowed, like every other general manager is, okay, most general managers get a chance to draft a quarterback, okay, or – bring in whichever quarterback they think can be really good. And I believe if Jerry Reese had been able to do that because Eli Manning, he, he inherited Eli Manning. And like I said, I give Eli all the credit for his part in the Giants' two Super Bowls in twenty seven and 2007 and, and in 2011. I give him all the credit for that, but I just think that there was a point where it was time to, all right, cut ties. Excuse me. Like, I'll tell you when I was done with Eli Manning. I was done with him after, okay, 20, 2012, after winning the Super Bowl, we get off to a great start, like 6-2, and two, I believe. 
And then from that point on, the Giants, all right, did not play very well. They ended up not making the playoffs. Okay. So, like, that second half, Eli Manning, I believe he didn't – it was something like where he didn't even, like, throw a touchdown to, like, one receiver the last eight weeks or something like that. It was, it was bad. Okay. So, that was frustrating. Okay. Then the next year, 2013, Giants start off, like, 0-6. Eli has a horrible year. And he finishes the year with 18 touchdown passes and 27 interceptions. And he had more turnovers than rookie Jets quarterback that year, Geno Smith. He led the whole NFL in turnovers. You know what? At that point, I was done with him. I wanted the Giants to get a new quarterback at that point. I was like, yo, like the Giants, before Eli Manning, before the Giants won a Super Bowl with him in 07, before that, like he had a lot of struggles, okay? People were questioning whether or not he was the guy who the Giants should keep as their quarterback, you know, going forward. I mean, he was being doubted. In 2007, before the Giants caught fire on the last game of the regular season, uh, well, really the last couple of weeks before they caught fire, the Giants, like Eli Manning was getting ridiculed by everybody, by the fans, by the media, and people were saying that he's not good enough. And the Yankee, the, 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 the fans, the fans of the media were very close and the end of 2007, before the Giants caught fire and went on to win the Super Bowl. Before that, the fans and the media were very close to running Eli Manning out of town. I mean, he was very much on the hot seat, okay? And so was the head coach before that. But I remember feeling, I remember feeling sorry for the head coach because I felt like the quarterback was about to get them both fired, okay? And then Eli and the Giants, all right, they went on a great run, okay? And they ended up winning the Super Bowl. And so then, and then, like, after that, you know, everything changed. And then, of course, four years later, all right, Eli and the Giants did it again, okay, which is great stuff, right? Uh, great stuff. But my whole thing was, in 2013, when Eli now is throwing 18 touchdown passes and 27 interceptions and leading the NFL in turnovers, my thing is, like, okay, we should be past this point, okay? Like, we should be past this. Like, we went through all these years where we were, like, struggling with you and, we were wondering if you were the guy and you were looking awful at times and, you know, not looking good at all. And then, you know, we thought we turned that corner. Now now we're back to now we're back to this. Eighteen touchdown passes, twenty seven interceptions. No, like I'm done. Like I'm done. So I was done. But what happens? Jerry Reese, the Giants general manager, he drafts Odell Beckham Junior. <laughs> that next draft. He drafts Odell Beckham Junior and Odell Save Eli's season. Eli Manning, okay? <laughs> the next two seasons, folks, okay? For just the second and third time in his career, okay? And the only other, you know, the second and third time, and he didn't do it again. For just the second and third time in his career, Odell Beckham's first two seasons, okay? Eli Manning throws for three touchdown passes, okay? He only, he only thrown for three touchdown passes one other time. In his career, which started in 2004, okay, <laughs> before Odell Beckham showed up. Odell Beckham shows up. He has two straight seasons where he reaches the 30 touchdown pass mark. <laughs> so Odell saved Eli's career, and even even with that, he, you know, if they had a better quarterback, I felt like they could have done a lot more things past that point. But what have you? But you know, my my point is that Phil Sims, who to me is the best quarterback in Giants history, Phil Simms. I love Phil Simms, okay? Number two, I got to go with my man Jeff Hosteller. I love him too, okay? He came in for Phil Simms when Phil Simms got hurt in 1990, okay? I remember like it was yesterday. First of all, the Giants started off 10-0 that year. They lost their first game in game 11 to Philadelphia, at Philadelphia, a butt kicking, okay? And then a few games later, the Giants are playing the Buffalo Bills at home, all right? I believe it was a Saturday game. And Phil Simms gets hurt. He's out for the year. At that point, I remember thinking, like, the season was over because every time I had seen the backup Jeff Hosteller before that, when every time he had played, he looked horrible. So I'm like, oh, the Giants, you know, most teams, they lose their starting quarterback and season's over. So I was devastated, <laughs> all right? Thought it was over. Jeff Hosteller comes in, all right? He can run some. He is, is, or he is more mobile than, than Phil Simms. And he's making passes. Giants end up winning the Super Bowl with Jeff Hosteller in 1990. So, hey, Phil Simms, Jeff Hosteller, to me, I've, I've said this before, okay? And 
people people may think it's crazy, but to me, Kerry Collins was a better quarterback than Eli Manning. Okay, and before everybody just loses their mind and thinks that I'm crazy, and I say this because first of all, it's all about opportunity. Okay, and I just feel like yes, okay, Eli eventually, the Giants won Super Bowls with Eli. They won two. But it's because the Giants gave Eli the opportunity that, you know, everybody does not get, that Kerry Collins did not get. And I just feel like if Kerry Collins was given the opportunity, if he was given as big of an opportunity as Eli Manning was given with the Giants, I feel like the Giants would have won a Super Bowl with Kerry Collins too, okay? And Kerry Collins holds more Giants playoff records than Eli Manning. Kerry Collins was only with the Giants for, like, the starter for, um, he came in, like, midway through 1999 season. They picked him up. And then 2000, his first full season, the Giants made the Super Bowl, his first full year, okay? And in that NFC championship game against Minnesota, Kerry Collins broke records. He threw, like, six touchdown passes, okay? (laughs) All right? All right? And he has the giant single game playoff record for most touchdowns thrown in a game. Uh, and that's a record. And he also has the record for the most points put up in a Giants playoff game, which the Giants got the Giants got the following year in, in that year because and, and when they beat Minnesota, in the 2000 championship game, the Giants scored 41 points, okay? And then the next game, the next year, well, two years later, 2002, the Giants scored, what, 38 points against San Francisco. <laughs> All right, two point totals that the Giants with Eli Manning never put on the board, okay? All right, so Kerry Collins, all right, has the record for the most touchdown passes thrown in the playoff game. He has hit record for the most, I believe, passing yards thrown in the Giants playoff game. And... He has the most. Um, he put he put more points on the board than Eli Manning ever did in a, in a, in a playoff game. Okay, and like, like I said, like the most prolific the Giants offense looked ever in my lifetime was in 2002 when the Giants that year, end of that year, their offense was a machine when Tiki Barber was running like okay, like, his, like he, when he was running like a Hall of Famer. Tiki Barber had. 10 years in the NFL. His last five, he played at a Hall of Fame level. 2002 was that first of the five years. Kerry Collins was throwing the ball, all right, beautifully deep down the field to Amani Toomer, Ike Hillier, Jeremy Shockey's first year. They were pointing the points on the board big time. And, uh, of course, they were up 38-14 to 14 in their first playoff game in 2002 against San Francisco, and they ended up losing the game. Like, that was a heartbreaker and all that disaster. But that was the morning defense for not being able to hold – if your offense scores 38 points, you should uh, win the game. But so Eli Manning, I mean, so Kerry Collins um, has all the, has you know he 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 has records, uh, and the Giants. All right, in 2003, the Giants, the Giants uh, have a bad year. 2003 after they had that really good season in 2002 and that but they had that playoff uh loss collapse next year 03 they have a really bad year a lot of injuries and that was it giants had a high draft pick and they ended up drafting eli manning and getting rid of kerry collins yeah so kerry collins threw five touchdowns against minnesota in the nfc championship game which is a giant record, okay? So you can say I'm crazy when I say that that Kerry Collins was, all right, better than Eli, but just the fact that after one bad year, the Giants got rid of Kerry Collins, okay? If Eli Manning was held to that standard, he would have been gone, all right, way before uh, he ever was. And, like, that's my point, you know? But not just Eli Manning. Forget, Forget Eli Manning. But I'm just saying that the that the that the non accountability began with Eli Manning, okay? Because even Phil Sims, all right, all that he did, the Giants, Phil Sims, all right, ninety three, the Giants went eleven and five with Phil Sims. They won a playoff game against Minnesota, then lost to San Francisco in the second round, 
And that was it. The Giants got rid of Phil Simms. They dropped Phil Simms like a bad habit, okay, after the 93 season when he went 11-5 and five and won a playoff game. They got rid of him for Dave Brown. So now you're telling me that we got to keep Eli Manning for all these years when we lose him every year and we got to keep him when you got rid of Phil Simms after a winning 11-5 and five season with a playoff victory? Like, what's going on? What, what's going on? Okay, the best quarterback in franchise history got treated, okay, got dropped like a bad habit after a really good season, and you're keeping Eli all these years after we you know we're terrible? Okay. And then, and now, now, that's the case with Daniel Jones, who has done nothing at all, okay? Eli, of course, at least got the two rings. Like, I get it with Eli. I get it, okay? He was a part of, he was the quarterback for the Super Bowl championships, so everybody is in denial. Everybody loves him. Okay, I get it. I get it. Even though I don't agree with it, I get it. But with Daniel Jones, like, but what's going on? All right, he done nothing, and fifth year, and they're still making excuses for Daniel Jones. So, like I said, if Daniel Jones, if this was any other time before the Eli Manning era, if this was any other time in Giants history, Daniel Jones would have been lost his job. He would have been held accountable. But like I said, since Eli showed up. The accountability at the quarterback position for the Giants is gone.